Council better turn out this week than last week. Because it was in the paper before. Right? It's only going to get busier. You might be doing this in the Lesker Lake, it's eight stories high. I tried with uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Anyway. So what's the best way to get up there? Oh, there's two through ways, and I'll get. Helicopter. You want to do that first, or do you want to go and have them gather around? I'll give them a little. Talk. Okay. Well, how about you give us a little chat right now? Gather in here a little bit closer, so she doesn't have to yell so much. Can we put him up on your yeah, shoulder? <laughs> Get closer because I'm deaf. Anyway, <laughs> folks, I found this place by accident. I was coming from Boom Lake. I'll start off by giving you a little history. I lived at Star Lake, and I used to go hiking with, with a pack sack, and, you know, going here and there and doing this and that. And I was coming back from Boom Lake, and I, instead of cutting around, I decided to go through, and I passed over the Esper Ridge and passed across the little lake, and I thought, oh, and the first thing was, what the heck are those? And there they are, folks. See them through the trees? Can you see the rocks? Right through the trees. Look at them. Look how high they are. Isn't that something? Anyway, I found these rocks and I kept it to myself. And I started coming back here because there's a family of deer that lives here. And I used to take some of my young nieces and nephews here to watch the deer. And we would sit for hours and hours watching the deer. And we'd, you know, I had them explore the rocks. And uh, later on, I used to bring the school children from the schools here uh, as on a discovery day thing, and they, they liked it. And then I started bringing teachers, and then uh, started out with uh, Mert Lake and his gang, and they came here, and several groups were coming here to see the rocks. And every time I'd bring them out, the following weekend, they'd call me back and say that they couldn't find them because they're very <laughs> hard to find. <laughs> Look, you go right by it. Now, I'll give you a little bit of the idea of what happened. This is an old logging road made by Mallette. But the original road that was here was made by Fellman. And they just improved it because they were hauling white pine out of here. Now if you go if you go east, southeast here, you'll go up, up, upgrade, and you come to the highest area around here. Actually when you climb the, any of the you know the little mounds or a rock, you can see for miles and miles and miles. And uh, if you come back, and I can, I won't be able to show you today because I haven't found it recently. There's a spring bubbling out of the ground with the most beautiful water. And I found it by listening. Because uh, who's the bird man? You can find <laughs> more things by listening than looking, right? Absolutely, so, yes. Okay. So I, I, I started coming here simply because it was such a beautiful place. At Star Lake, there was a gentleman living down the road from me. His name is Dale Pike, and he's, he's, a, he's got a doctorate in geology. And he teaches at the Toronto University. So. He, we were good friends, he came here with me and he told me some things about this rock and he felt, well, first of all I have to tell you that right here, right in the James V. Lowlands, there was one mile of ice on this area and we, we figured out, and we didn't do it calcul by, by calculating, but we thought there must have been hundreds of billions of tons of pressure against any rock that's, that's impeding the movement. If, it, if you've got this big glacier going down, it's got this load of rock, and it hits another outcrop of rock, it just shears it off. And up here, for those of you who want to climb, you'll look <laughs> down and take away the moss and you can see all the, I think it's called striations. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Striations, where the rocks have gone sliding across and they gouged out just like a chisel would. And there's, they're up there now, but they're covered with moss and I haven't been uncovering them. I leave it exactly the way it is. I keep telling people, don't break the twigs. Don't break anything, just leave it exactly the So. When I started looking at this, I thought this is an unusual thing, and I brought this Dale Pike here, and he said, he thinks that the, the, the glacier split here, for, for whatever reason, and the rocks, as they were melting, uh, the glacier as it was melting, was letting the rocks fall in the crack that was formed by the, by the glacial crack, if you will. And they were piling one on, on top of the other, as opposed to just at random. Because there's lots of rocks all over the woods, but there's only one high. These here, there's six or seven high, and there's caves underneath them. You look down in, and you can see holes where. In the paper, in the newspaper, no, the the tourist guide, it says that someone said that they were forced by an upheaval. Uh uh They were forced by the glacier, and their their clue was they were not, uh, not um, how do you call it, glacial deposits because they weren't wor worn around. Well, some are. But these here are just broken, I think, from the tumbling down. They're a mile high. 
I'll, I'll depart from what I'm talking about right now. And I went to Alaska <laughs> to climb glaciers and to look at glaciers. And I've come down in the glaciers. I go up by helicopter and tie a rope to the, to the helicopter and go down into, they're called the French people, a moulin. It means a little mill. And it means because it turns like that. And it goes down, you know, several hundred feet, thousand feet. And, and the only reason you don't go any further is I didn't have light. <laughs> it gets dark. <laughs> so, so, and, and the reason I want to see that was to see what a glacier is like. And right there you can see where a whole a wall of a canyon is being scraped down and just sheared just like you would uh, icing on a cake. You know, it's just like pushed to the side because you're looking at hundreds of thousands of tons of pressure. And then in, in a glacier, you'll see where two glaciers meet and it leaves a wind rule of soil and dirt. And, that, and that's what I was looking at. In other words, I was not studying it from a scientific standpoint, but mostly as a learning thing, going in among the glaciers and doing this kind of jazz. And this is why I've always been impressed by this place here. It's huge. I took the time to, to plot where the rocks are. I took the time to draw it and get the distance between it. And I loaned it. I mentioned to the people in the car with me that I loaned it to someone and I haven't seen it since, naturally. And it was kind of a dumb thing on my part. But anyway, I wanted to find some young person who would take it over. Whether they want to take the name over, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want some young person to take it and to plot these locks again. Okay, back in there, there's all kinds of Esker Lakes. Now, Cuscasse and Esker Lake. You know? They're a, they're a glacial deposit. Big sand loads and that and the ice. Ice melts and leaves a hole where it was. And there's always sand around it, just like this. This is like I call beach sand, right? It's not gravel. But if you dig down it, you'll find gravel pits. And they're often sand leaks on top. And what happens with it, when, when the glacier melts, it deposits everything just like it does um, also, if you're baking something and you've got peanuts in it, you're some kind of broth you're making with peanuts, you'll find that the peanuts will go and form a layer around where the spoon was. And that's what happens with the glaciers. The rocks form themselves in a row because the glacier is moving. It picks them up at a certain place and, 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 and deposits them elsewhere. Have you people read the last month's National Geographic? It talks about this. Not here. But all over the world they have what they call anomalies. They're rocks here that don't belong here. For example, if you go back north here, about a mile, there's a big rock that's as big as a big as a big house, and it's leaning over in such a way that it's uh, that you could climb underneath to go and, and you can climb on top and see for miles again. But it's bath salt. It has no business there. Now, who 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 studied geology a bit? Anything about geology? Basalt doesn't belong here. Granite does, and this is all granite. But what's that basalt rock doing there? It might have been picked up on the Belcher Islands, because that's got basalt on it. And I'm not saying it did. But if you are, if there is no basalt around, and we've got a deposit of basalt, it has to come from somewhere. So where is that place? The nearest place. Okay. And it's the same thing with the people who talk about the the the, the uh, Egyptian pyramids. Everybody thinks they dug it out of the ground and put it there. No, no, those rocks come from miles and miles and miles away. And the same thing with these deposits. The, the deposit can bring a rock hundreds of miles, thousands of miles, and then drop them there. And the, the only way they can tell that it doesn't belong here, because if they can take this granite, and you could take a chip off it, and analyze it by the granites up at Beltro Islands, and find that it's the same, it's like it came from there. We're not suggesting that it does, but it might. So, this is the interest I have in here. And I'm just sad about one thing, folks, I'll tell you this before, is I'm getting too old to follow it up. <laughs> I, I can't even write anymore, and you know. So it, it's, it, it's sad for me in that respect, because this place needs exploring. There's all kinds of them. There's some, there's some extra lakes here with no water in them that you'd be afraid to go down in the hole. They're that deep. You go way down and you can't see the, you know, and they're all over. I have the map, and if you want to take time later on, I'll haul the map out and show you where they are. They're just little, well, that's one there. That's an Esker Lake. Come and have a look at it closely.
<laughs> I can see the crowd this way. The <laughs> pants were empty, had all their pants were full, and there would be always geese here. And not, not to shoot them, but to look at them. It was just wonderful to go right now. Now, there, there you get a better look at the rocks. See them, oh, how high wow. they are? Yeah. It's not unusual that there are rocks here, it's unusual that they're that high. Okay, really thank you for listening to me. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Archie, we always wondered. We have we were here about 15 years ago, and we always went, no, just on our own, and we wondered where the name came from and, and what was going on with that. So 15 was, uh, years later, the man was a, a teacher at Roland Mishner. Uh, and he, I think he called them Arches Rocks when he oh, was there. Somewhere. Yeah. And that's how it started. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. There you go. I guess for lack of another name, they called them out for me. And that's kind of nice. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, I don't own the land. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody lose a whistle on a. Um. Ow! <laughs> Careful! There you are. There's no way over there. Wow. Are you trying to get back up? You came up that way? Yeah. It's not easy that way. No. What do you see from up there, guys? Now we need to go this way, right? People have actually climbed up the way, right? You got skins on the other side of the rocks. Oh, yeah? Look at Len over here. Some of us decided to stop here. Oh, and how are we going to get down? YouTube video for climbing. Arctic Rock. Take one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Wave! <laughs> You'll be viral by the end of the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in competition. Get a plaque and officially uh, this place will be named Archie's Rock. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good idea. If you head out this way, north of here, you go to Ellery Lake, go to the yes. far end of Ellery Lake and look for the old cabin that's there. The old cabin was built in 1917 because there's a claim post near it. I took the, t you, you know it's illegal to take the t stickers off. I took one into the, uh, the uh, mining recorder's office and it had been claimed in 1917 by Mr. Ellery. The lake is named after him. So go in that area. It's just wonderful walking. It's like this. And you're not in swamp, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, you just walk around and just bring a compass, and, you, and it's all you know interwoven with roads and that, so you can stay on the road. And it's just wonderful. There's all kinds of stuff back in here, beautiful. There's an area there that if you sit there for a day, you'll see a moose, guaranteed. If you take this number and we'll bring it to the mining recorder's office, he'll tell you who. You go online, who, yeah. Whose number it is, and he'll give you the name of the person. Now the ones up here that I looked at are Mr. Ellery, and the name of the lake is Ellery, maybe. So he was, can you imagine how he had to get here though? Can you ever stop to think about that? He had to, he'd get his horses and tenants, he'd paddle up the Metagamy River, upstream to the mouth of Cripple Creek, and had to work his way up Cripple Creek to Dana Lake, across Dana Lake, down into Star Lake, into Little Star Lake, and here and do the Little Lake. That's a long way. With his pack sock and his canoe and stuff. Unbelievable. Panning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to feel the pan for gold. I got quite a bit. I gathered little pieces, you know, made of a little, yeah, a little chunky. It was kind of fun to do. Yeah.